Most people think that skipping meals makes you sluggish. However, research suggests that fasting may enhance brain function, promote neuroplasticity, enhance cognitive resilience, and metabolic efficiency. Let me take you back to where it all began. The sun rises over the African savannah. A lone hunter, Lirum, kneels beside a waterhole, cupping his hands to drink. His tribe hasn't eaten since yesterday. The children are restless, hunger grips them. But Lirum, he feels sharp. His mind is calm, focused and alert. He picks up tiny details, the direction of the wind, the shifting of the grass, the footprints in the soil. What's happening inside his body right now is not a failure, it's an evolutionary advantage. Lirum doesn't know it, but his brain has switched fuels. And this ancient process, the metabolic switch, is the reason his people have survived for thousands of years. And it's still inside us. Today I'll explain how fasting enhances cognition, memory and cellular resilience, and how we can leverage its physiological benefits for optimal brain function. In this video, I'll be using analogies and terms like fuel, super fuel, optimization to illustrate concepts. But I want to highlight that it's not because these aspects are inherently superior in all contexts, but because these comparisons help explain their function in the body. Whilst everything I discuss is grounded in evidence and research, the significance and applicability of these mechanisms can vary depending on individual physiology and medical context. So the goal is to provide a clear understanding whilst acknowledging these nuances. This video is based on the article that I've written here on intermittent fasting. So for a deeper dive on the neuroscience and the scientific mechanisms, you can read this here on psychscenehub.com. Welcome to Psychiatry Simplified. I'm Dr. Sunil Rege, consultant psychiatrist. If you're interested in all things psychiatry, neuroscience, and mental health related, then this is the channel for you. Please hit the subscribe button to stay in touch with all our future videos. So let's get back to Lirun and his story. The feast and the famine cycle. Our ancestors never had constant access to food. Some days they feasted fresh meat, wild berries, and grains. Other days they had nothing. And yet, their brains didn't shut down. They adapted. To survive, the human body evolved two metabolic modes. We have the glucose metabolism. Think of it as the quick burning fuel for times of plenty. And two, ketone metabolism, a backup system, activated when food is scarce. So. If you want to think about it as an analogy, think of it like a hybrid car. Normally, it runs on petrol, which is the glucose, fast, powerful, but short-lived. But when fuel runs low, it automatically switches to electric mode, ketones. More efficient, longer lasting, and equally powerful. And right now, Lirum is running on ketones. This is the first unlock, the metabolic switch. So what's happening with the metabolic switch in Lirum's body and brain. It's been 16 hours since Lirum last ate. His liver's glycogen stores are empty, but instead of feeling weak, his body shifts into ketosis. Here, fat cells release free fatty acids, FFAs, into the blood. The liver converts these into ketones, beta-hydroxybutyrate, BHB, and ACAC. His brain begins running on ketones instead of glucose. So, normally, Lirum's body burns dry wood glucose. Quick, hot, but short-lived. Now, he switched to coal. Ketones. Steady, slow-burning, and powerful. And ketones don't just fuel the brain, they upgrade it. Now, this particular term, upgrade, please do take it into context. This is about highlighting the enhanced neuroprotection, cellular resilience, etc. But let's all take it within the right context. So what's happening in Lirum's brain? His brain is now undergoing a neuroscientific transformation, if you want to think about it that way, that gives him that evolutionary edge. And how does this happen? Ketosis increases brain-derived neurotropic factor, which is, think of it as the brain's fertilizer. The longer he fasts, the higher his BDNF levels climb. BDNF is known to strengthen neural connections. It enhances learning and memory. It also protects against cognitive decline. So it's really a fertilizer for the brain, strengthening pathways, allowing Lirum to learn faster, recall better, and make split-second decisions, which you can imagine is very, very important during a time where individuals had to make a split-second decision to run away from a predator, for example. This means every time he fasts, his brain is physically improving. Two, 
mitochondrial biogenesis. What fasting does or what ketones do is it powers up the brain's energy supply. Lurim's neurons aren't just working harder. They're working smarter. So his brain is producing new mitochondria, tiny engines that power brain cells. His neurons are burning fuel more efficiently, reducing oxidative stress. And his brain is resilient, faster, and more energy efficient than when constantly fed. So to think about it as an analogy, it's like upgrading an old power plant to say maybe a nuclear reactor, more energy, less waste, and no overheating. And this isn't just theory. Studies show that fasting triggers mitochondrial biogenesis, thus offering a neuroprotective effect. Third, fasting and the resulting ketosis state also enhances autophagy, which is the brain's cleanup crew. Autophagy clears out old damaged proteins. Cells recycle broken components into stronger replacements. Neurons remove toxic waste, preventing long-term damage. And what's interesting is that the discovery of autophagy by Japanese biologist Osumi won him the Nobel Prize in 2016 for physiology and medicine. So fascinating stuff. So if we think about it as an analogy, if neurons are a city, autophagy is a garbage disposal system, removing broken machinery, sharpening tools, and keeping the system efficient. That's why fasting has some evidence of neuroprotection when it comes to Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and cognitive decline. But once again, note here, we're not talking about a cure or a definitive link. We're talking about research suggesting neuroprotective possibility. But here's where it gets really interesting. This isn't just about ancient hunters. Modern science confirms the same. Mechanisms that Lirum relied on, fasting and physical activity, still can enhance cognitive performance today. Human studies confirm that both physical activity and dietary energy restriction enhances cognition across different age groups. For example, children who engaged in over five hours of weekly physical activity had higher IQs and faster cognitive processing compared to sedentary peers. Aerobic fitness is linked to improved processing speed in pre-adolescence and maintains cognitive ability into old age, independent of childhood IQ. In adults, aerobic exercise enhances cognitive flexibility and creativity, while passive activities show no such benefit. So that's a lesson here that after finishing the video, it might be helpful to use some of these principles and transform that into physical activity as well. Caloric restriction, 30% reduction for three months, improves verbal memory. And we know that the Japanese concept of hara hachibu, eat until you're 80% full, is linked to longevity as seen in the book Ikigai. I've covered this in the video on the neuroscience of Ikigai as well. Further evidence tells us that overweight individuals with mild cognitive impairment show improvements in verbal fluency and executive function following dietary energy restriction. So what it tells us is more exercise, increased neurogenesis, better energy regulation, results in enhanced learning and memory, and higher fitness levels equates likely to faster cognitive processing. Why? Because movement and fasting share a common evolutionary signal. Mild stress enhances resilience, the principle of hormesis. So an analogy would be, imagine your brain as a muscle. And I know it's often said, think of your brain as a muscle. The more you challenge it with fasting and movement, the stronger, faster, and more efficient it becomes. Now, let's take it a step further. Lirum hears a rustle in the bushes, a predator. His heart pounds, but his brain remains calm, calculating. His body releases noradrenaline and dopamine, sharpening his focus. His parasympathetic system keeps his movements precise. His ketone fueled brain makes split-second decisions that could mean life or death. He grabs the spear, steadies his breathing, and in one swift motion, he throws. Silence the predator collapses. Lirum is one, not because he ate more, but because his brain was optimized for fasting. Next, let's look at the flip-flop model. Why the balance matters, and it's not just a one-sided process of fasting. That night, Lirum's tribe feasts. During fasting, the body repairs and strengthens. During eating, the body regenerates and rebuilds. Think of this as a fighter's training cycle. Fasting is the battle. Eating is the recovery. Both are needed for long-term strength and resilience. But often when we see what's happening in modern society, it seems like modern society has forgotten that this is a cycle. So in some cases, we're stuck in constant feeding mode, 
But in some cases, individuals take the other route towards an excessive focus on just fasting or fixed intermittent fasting diets. Note, the key here was the switch. So how do we unlock the hunter's brain in the modern world? Liram's time has passed, but the biology is still inside us. The problem is we either never stop eating or we may move too much towards fad diets. So what are the practical strategies for implementing intermittent fasting. The key is, of course, the word intermittent, because what we want is to ensure metabolic switches. So we have a range of methods, the 16-8 method, a structured fasting window of 16 hours followed by an eight-hour eating period. Alternate day fasting, ADF, fasting every other day while maintaining adequate nutrition on non-fasting days. There's a five to two approach, eating normally for five days a week with two days of reduced caloric intake or fasting. The key to remember here is intermittent fasting is not just about food restriction. It is a metabolic strategy that optimizes brain function, enhances cognitive resilience, and promotes long-term neurological health. Note that Lirum was unlikely to just have the 16-8 method or the alternate day fasting or the five is to two approach because randomness was part of the ancestor's life. And it is this randomness and the random switching that ensures that we are exposed to metabolic switches. So to summarize, our ancestors thrived in periods of metabolic switching, where fasting played a crucial role in cognitive and physiological adaptation. This was followed by fading. Physical activity was a core part of it. Sleep as well. So what it tells us is that this metabolic switching process through intermittent fasting should be part of a wider construct towards health. This evolutionary mechanism remains biologically relevant today, offering potential benefits for cognition, metabolic health, and neuroprotection. I'm interested in what experiences you've had with intermittent fasting, if you've ever tried it. Have you noticed changes in focus, energy, or mental clarity? Please share your experiences below in the comments section. If you like this video, please hit the like button. It really helps the channel. And subscribe to our channel for future insights on mental health and neuroscience. I look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Until then, stay curious. Bye-bye.